Hello and welcome to another video uh, looking at our little micro rat puzzle where we're trying to help a physically modelled ball shaped robot called Bumper to explore, map and navigate a maze uh, where the walls are also physically modelled and so it can run into them. And uh, in this video, what we're going to look at is how we can get Bumper to move reliably from one square to another. We can't explore and map the maze unless Bumper can move from one square to another. Now, what I've got up on the screen here is the code of a turn to function that we developed in a previous video. Um, Bumper we doesn't have an inbuilt turn to. We're just allowed to apply positive or negative uh, power um, between minus one and one. Uh, to its left and right motors to make it turn, but its momentum tends to carry it too far. So we needed to write a turn to function uh, to control it so that we could turn accurately. And that's what this code on the screen does. Uh, so let's give a quick recap talking through it. What we do is we say, OK, we want to turn to some angle in radians, uh, which in this one is measured clockwise from uh, the x, x axis clockwise because in our graphics coordinates the positive y axis uh, positive y values go down the page the top left corner is zero zero um, and we say okay there is some amount of error that we're going to allow we're not going to be able to turn to an exact angle because floating point numbers aren't so precise that two uh, two de decimal numbers will often be exactly the same as each other um, so instead we will say, OK, we, our turn to function will allow an error of up to 0.01 radians. Uh, we declare this function called delta. That's going to hold the current difference between where we want to be facing, and where we are facing. And then we have this loop that says, OK, inside the loop, uh, how far away are we from where we want to be facing? If we are too far away from where we want to be facing, work out some power to apply to the motors that is going to be uh, proportionate to how far away from the target we are. So uh, when it when it gets between uh, within one radian of the target, it starts to take the power off the motors a little bit. Uh, and then, well, let's also work out which direction we need to apply power to the motors in, whether we want to turn clockwise or anti-clockwise and apply that. On the other hand, if we are close enough to the target, let's turn the power to the motors off entirely and let's do that while we are too far away from the angle that we want to be facing or while we have too much angular velocity and our angular momentum is going to carry us too far away from the angle that we want to be facing. And that gave us a reasonably reliable turn to function that would let me do things like turn to math.pi uh, over 2, which is um, pi by 2 uh, divided by 2 radians is about 90 degrees. And so that should turn and face this way. And it does. And so that is our turn to function. Now, Let's have a look at how we can actually get uh, Bumper to move into the squares. Uh, well, the first thing to say is if we want to move into a square, we need to be facing in the right direction that we can move into that square. If we wanted to move into this square here, we're going to need to turn to it. Uh, so we are going to need to use our turn to function. The other thing to say, though, is uh, I'd like to be able to say I want to move into square 0, 0,1 and move roughly to the middle of it. Um, but that is like numbering the squares 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9 in the x direction, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in the y direction. But these tiles are 64 pixels wide and 64 pixels high. And so our location at the moment isn't zero, zero. Our location at the moment is 32, 32, the middle of that square. So we're going to need a little way of working out what is the pixel location of any square that we want to move into. Now, if we're in zero, zero, so that is 32 pixels in. If we were in the middle of the next one, that would be 32 pixels plus 64, so 96. If we wanted to be in the next one, 96 plus 64 is 160. So this looks like it's 32 plus the tile number times the tile width times 64. So let's just write that as a little function. Function pixel location uh, for a tile. And this is going to work in the x direction or in the y direction because, you know, there we're 32 pixels. That would be 96. That would be 160. Um, 
Uh, so what we can say is that we are going to return 32 plus the tile coordinate version um, times 64. And so that, that can, if you like, it's, it's like a unit conversion between measuring it in tiles and measuring it in pixels. Okay. Next thing to say, let, let us start writing my function. I would like to move to x, and I want it to in tile co uh, coordinates rather than pixel coordinates, y in tile coordinates rather than pixel coordinates. Uh, well, the first thing I need to be able to do is I, I, I need to be able to face in that direction so that uh, I know where I'm going. And so I need to get the angle of what will give me uh, the middle of that square. I tell you what, let us um, be good programmers and write things as meaningful functions. And so let me just say that I would like to face that tile. And I'm going to now need to define a function that is going to make me face a particular tile coordinate. All right, what do I want to do there? Well, um, I need to work out what the coordinate of that square is. So let's go um, that uh, the x that we want to go, tile x, x position, that is the pixel location of the middle of that square. And the tile's y position is the pixel coordinate of that one. All right. And, well, hang on, hang on. If I was to turn to face the middle of this square, and if I was just to work it out from those coordinates, uh, that would be as if I was trying to look from the origin. And so if I was looking from 0, 0 to there, that would be this angle. And so I'd end up kind of staring a little bit wrong. So I am going to need to subtract my own x and y coordinates to work out, OK, how far in the x direction do I want to face, how far in the y direction I want to face. So let's now say that actually dx, the change in x I want to face, uh, is that minus my own x position. The change in y that I want to face is um, the y position of, the, uh, of that minus uh, my own y position. And for the moment, let us just print learn of dx and let's print learn dy. So we're not actually doing any turning just yet. And so now if I go move two of uh, 1 comma 0, then that is saying I want to face 64 pixels this way and 0 pixels this way. Yep, that looks about right. If I wanted to uh, be heading towards uh, 0 comma 1, well, it's if I want to be facing 0 comma 1, then that would be uh, facing 0 pixels this way and 64 pixels this way. Yep, that looks right. That should take me to the middle of that square. So now I need to work out what the angle is that is going to face me in that direction. Now, this is a bit of trigonometry, and the complicated version of it is to say that, well, if you take the arc tangent um, uh, from from uh, y units and x units. Uh, that'll give you an angle, but it'll be alias depending on the sign of the etc. etc. Um, the thing they might not tell you in maths class is that there is a function in the maths library that will do this for you. Um, there is a function in JavaScript's uh, math library and most other um, languages that is called math.atan2. And this takes the arc tang tangent of a y and an x and does all the anti-aliasing depending on the sign of it, etc. And the short version is you give it a number of pixels you want to face in the y direction and a number of pixels you want to face in the x direction, noting that you put the y direction first and it gives you the angle that will face in that direction. And so now if I was to print learn of the angle, we can find out what angle do I need to be facing to move to square one zero, what angle do I need to be facing to move to square zero one? Uh, which one I've got in here at the moment? Um, and let's go face one zero and facing one zero, yep, zero degrees, uh, uh, sorry, zero radians. And if I wanted to face square zero comma one from where I am, that would be 1.57. So that's, yep, that is about half pi. Pi is three and a bit. So, um, uh, half of pi is 
a bit over one and a half. Uh, if I wanted to face minus one comma zero, a, um, a square somewhere behind me uh, off the screen, then yep, that would be facing pi, uh, etc. So that has now given me um, <clears throat> something that should give me the angle that I want to turn to. Well, so let's turn to it. Let us now go turn to that angle. And now if I want to face, well, if I want to face minus one comma zero, that should turn backwards. There we go. Now I'm facing backwards. If I wanted to turn to the square zero comma one down here, then that should, yep, that's turned me nice near there. What if I wanted to go diagonally? And so let us run that. And yep, that will now work diagonally. So I've just used a little bit of um, trigonometry here to work out what angle I want to be facing. And then I've just said turn to that angle. And the function that I developed, uh, developed beforehand has turned me uh, in that direction. Well, that's only part of the problem, though turning to face that direction isn't quite enough. We've actually got to move there too. All right, so let us now develop something that is going to move me in that direction. Um, so, well, let's say that I would like to face that direction and then travel forwards some distance d. Well, how far do I need to travel to reach that point if I'm facing the right direction. Well, I, I then I need to do a little bit more trigonometry. I've got to work out um, if I've got a right angle triangle that is going X pixels in the X direction and Y pixels in the Y direction, then what is the size of this hypotenuse? What is that distance? Uh, I'm going to call this magnitude because later on I'll also use it for velocities. But let me go function magnitude. And uh, so this is a little bit of uh, trigonometry. Um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so x squared plus y squared equals d squared, so d is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I'm going to return math dot square root of math dot pow x comma 2 x squared plus math dot pow y comma 2, that's, uh, that's y squared. All right, so now I want to say that I want to go forward um uh that particular distance uh well what is that distance uh that distance is going to be uh well if i can get those pixel locations again um so that is that was the distance i need to travel on the x-axis and that was the distance i need to travel on the y-axis and so i can say let uh, distance is going to be um the magnitude of dx dy and then I just want to go forwards that amount of distance and if I do that well I should find that I turn and then it complains that I've not defined the um, uh, oops sorry I, I've deleted this so if I were just to go to move to 0 comma 1 it'll turn to it and it'll then complain that I've not actually written my forward function all right turns to it and reference error forward is not defined so our next job is to write a function that will travel me forwards a set amount of distance. Now, this is going to start to look a lot like our turn to function. Um, our turn to function had this issue that uh, if we set ourselves turning, um, then our momentum would carry ourselves too far if we just turned off the motor once we got to that angle. I'm going to find the same thing, that if I just... Um, make myself travel forwards and when I get there turn off the motors then my momentum is going to carry me a little bit too far so let, let's do that and let's see that happen so let me start writing function forward of distance well somehow I'm going to need to know how far I have traveled to know if I've traveled far enough to know how far I've traveled I'm going to need to know where I began so let me start off by saying that my starting x position uh, is where I am when I come into the function. And my starting y position is um, where I am when I came into the function. And let us declare that to begin with, the distance that I've traveled is 0. And let us declare to begin with a variable called delta. And I'm just going to put that to zero for the moment. We're going, we're going to alter it inside a loop. 
And when we were doing our turn function, we worked out that well, what we need to do is keep looping and see if we've traveled far enough yet. And so let me now go do, and let me go while, and let's start off by saying while delta uh, is greater than zero. And uh, then let's just make sure that we turn off the motors when the exit function. Uh, so let's go set left power of zero, set right power of zero. And what did we want to do? Well, we wanted to say that if the dis, uh, well, first of all, we need to say that work out how far we have traveled. And so how far we have traveled is going to be, well, it's the magnitude of how far have we traveled in the x direction, which is get x minus start x. And how far we've traveled in the y direction, get y minus start y. So that should give me, here is how far you have traveled. Delta, let's set this to be um, uh, the difference between how far I want to travel and how far I have traveled. So this is going to be distance minus travel. Okay, and then I want to say if that delta is bigger than zero, if I've not traveled far enough yet, then I want to set the left power to be one, and I want to set the right power to be one. I want to keep going forwards. Uh, and then at the moment, that should turn it off at the end of the function. Okay, so let me now see, see what happens. I've already got a bug. Okay, here we go. So uh, this has sort of worked, but I've got this problem with my momentum. If I have a look closely, uh, you should see, let, let's travel a bit further. Let's go along the X direction and so that I've got a moment to say this and you'll see the lights go on as it travels along and you'll see the lights go off when it hits the middle and the momentum, it'll just carry it too far. Uh, whoop, yep, we've just, our momentum has carried us over the line into the next square. Uh, so uh, what we did when we were developing our angle function, we, we said, well, okay, instead let us um, have a bit of control and if we overshoot, let's back up a bit. And so then what we would say is that our thing for going forwards, uh, we want to say if the absolute difference between uh, where we've, um, um, whether we've traveled far enough yet is bigger than zero. And then we want to consider, okay, have we gone too far or not far enough? So let's say if delta is greater than zero. So this is if there is a difference between how far we've traveled and how far we want to travel. And uh, this is if it's if that difference is because we've not traveled far enough yet. And uh, then we need the case of, well, if that difference is because we've traveled too far. And uh, so let's now go left power of minus one. Uh, oops, sorry, having trouble. Set right power of minus one. And well, I best uh, fix this up too. And I'm going to get some other problems that are going to come up in a moment. Um, uh, now, if we are uh, if we are on target, however, I would like to turn the motors off. So this is not going to work, but it's going to do something slightly different. So let me now hit run on that, and we are still trying to move to square zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, comma naught, and whoa. It goes there, it overshoots, and it starts heading backwards. Um, well, uh, one of the, oops, this is one of my problems. I've actually accidentally put those both inside the brackets. Gosh, I just spotted that. That would have been hard to spot. Math.absolute of the delta. Um, so this is the number which is our, um, the, which is how far we want to travel minus how far we have traveled. That could give us a negative number. Math.abs turns the negative positive again. Um, okay, let's run that again. And there we go. We go zooming forwards and then we end up in this little infinite uh, oscillation. And uh, we saw the same thing happen to us uh, in when we were developing our turn function. And so the problem that we're hitting straight away uh, is that we are saying if there is any difference at all between how far we've traveled and how far we want to travel, then keep correcting. 
And because these are floating point numbers that uh, are incredibly accurate, lots of um, lots of numbers after the decimal point, uh, the chances are in any tech they, they won't have followed. You know, we, we, we won't be exactly the same. We might be out by a little, little bit. Um, so instead, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare a uh, how far away we're happy to be. And I'm going to say I don't really mind if we're about five pixels out where we finish. So down here, I'm then going to exit the loop uh, if my... Um, if, if if I'm not more than five pixels away from where, where I want to be. Okay, so that should hopefully get rid of some of the infinite recursion, but uh, we now go um, we now go sailing off, don't we? So that that is um, that, that, that that's uh, that, that's not great. Um, part of it again is because well actually we're still comparing to exactly zero here. So we are never hitting this set left power of zero, set right power of zero. And uh, we are just letting it keep sailing off. Let's change that so that that also compares to our error, uh, our allowable error. Are we close enough rather than are we exactly there? OK, and now we are turning the motors off. and uh, But we've still got this problem that our momentum is carrying us too far. And so we need to take into consideration uh, if we've got some velocity. Uh, so now in here... Uh, let's do the same sort of things we did uh, up when we were doing the um, uh, doing the one for the turn. In that one, we considered whether we still had too much angular velocity that was going to take our angle too far away. If so, stay in the while loop. Uh, let's do the same thing down here, but for positional velocity. And so now I would like to say, um, oh, well, I've got, I need to get my velocity, don't I? Uh, so let me go up here and let's declare... A variable for velocity uh, declaring it outside the loop uh, because I want to use the variable in here um, but then not shadowing it with a second let inside here uh, so now I want to say well my velocity is well what is my velocity uh, my velocity I've got some velocity in the x direction I've got some velocity in the y direction and that's like another of these right angle triangles my my overall velocity is the hypotenuse of that. So let's go, my velocity is the magnitude of my velocity in the x direction and my velocity in the y direction. And so I would now like to stay inside the while loop if my uh, velocity is bigger than, uh, let's just go with five again for a moment. And let's just see what happens. Okay, uh, let's let's shrink that down. I think I've got, I think, I think I've set that uh, too high maybe? No. Uh, oh, sorry, I've, I've put a comma here. There we go. I'm, I'm being blind to a little bit of a syntax error. While my position is wrong, or my velocity is too high and it will make my position wrong. OK, and so now we are zooming along and we're doing a little bit of an oscillation, but we are landing up in the middle of this in the middle of the square. So that's actually not too bad. Um, the other change that we did when we were doing the angle one might not matter so much for position, doesn't matter too much if we're a little bit out. Um, but what we did before was we uh, we worked out, well, let's back off if we're close to the target. So I tell you what, let us copy that as well. And let's think about backing off if we're close to the target. And so down here, rather than set power just to one or minus one, let's work out some strength um, that is uh, based on our distance away. Now, our distance away is measured in pixels. Uh, so I think, you know, we, we, we don't want to be at full strength if we're one pixel away. So let's, um, I tell you what, let's divide that by, should we go with 10 for the moment? And so we've now got some number that's going to be between uh, minus one and one. But if we're within 10 pixels, it's going to start shrinking. And so let's go V, V, minus V, minus V. Let's just have a look, look at that. And that damps it a bit. Uh, let's damp it a bit more. Um, let's say that we're, we're, we'll, we'll start shrinking it down if we're, let's go with 50 pixels. So that's, you know, even, that's kind of almost a, almost a square away that we start tailing off the power. And 
there looks pretty good. And I've ended up quite neatly in, in the middle of that square. And let us now see if we can also use that to move to uh, 0, 0,1. Let's see if we can move down here. And yep, that looks like we've now got a function that will allow us to move to the middle of a square. Um, there's a couple of little changes we're going to need to make to it though. Now, let me show you this. If we go 1, 0, so I'm going to go this way, then I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to hit the wall. So move to 1, 1, and we move there, we move there, bang. And we're actually, we're still trying to travel here. We've never traveled far enough because we're trying to travel this way, but the wall has stopped us. So we are going to need to alter our move function for the fact that we might hit a wall before we get there. Uh, so let's go and do that now. When we want to travel forward some distance, let's say that the first thing I want to do is clear the collision detector. Because down here, I actually want to say that I want to exit this if I hit a wall. So I'm only going to keep going around the loop if no collision has been detected and this stuff is the case. So this will now mean that if I detect a collision, I should exit the loop. And well, if I detect a collision, then let's not keep, you know, we, we, we've got to remember to uh, set the light left power and the right power to zero. So let's just do that as we exit the function so that regardless of how we've exited the function, uh, we turn the motors off. So now if I do that, there, oh, we've turned the motors off and oh, we've hit the wall. Uh, but we've got another little problem that we're going to need to deal with. So I would like to go there, turn right. Oops, I've hit a wall. Let's go to this one. So now let me go move to 2 comma 0. So uh, if I hit that wall, well, when I hit that wall, because I've not actually put an if in there, uh, I would instead like to turn and move to this one. And I'm going to have this problem that, uh, well, it actually kind of worked, but it was a little bit clumsy because I was stuck on that wall when I was trying to turn. Um, so the other thing I'm going to suggest that we might need is a, just a little back off function so that if we hit a wall, we can just back away from the wall slightly. And we don't need to be so accurate about this because this is just get us off the wall so that we're not turning while still rubbing against the wall. So I am just going to write a little function called back off. And I'm not even concerned about um, which way we're facing because we are just going to drive ourselves back a little a little distance. And so let's say that the distance I want to travel is five pixels. And uh, I'm going to say that, uh, well, what I want to do, uh, I'm going to care about where I started. So I'm going to be borrowing little bits of that move function, uh, but I don't need to be so accurate because I just want to get myself off the wall slightly. And so I still want to have, um, you know, how far I've traveled. But I don't really want to worry about errors or anything like that because I don't care actually if I go five pixels or six pixels or seven pixels or eight pixels. Uh, I just want to move off the wall. And so I'm just going to say do and let me work out how far I've traveled. Let me copy my code that did that. Traveled was equal to that equation there. And so let's put that in. And so then what I'd like to say uh, is if traveled is less than D, then I just want to set my motors running backwards a bit. Uh, set left power of minus one. Set right power of minus one. And I just want to do that while traveled is less than D. And, uh, whoops, sorry, that should be on the do loop. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to set the left power to zero and set the right power to zero. So this isn't quite going to work yet. Um, I'll show you why in just a moment, uh, but it's going to be pretty close. 
Uh, basically, I just set the power up a little bit too high. So now let me tell this to back off after I've hit the wall. And I, knew, I just know I'm going to hit the wall because I knew this maze. So zoop, zoop, bang. And OK, that actually worked all right because I was only going five pixels. Um, the thing I was going to say is that, um, well, it kind of goes a little bit strong. And so it, it, you, because I'm backing off at full strength, Although I said I only want to back off five pixels, I've actually gone kind of half the tile. Uh, so all I'm going to do to fix that is I'm just going to say I don't need to back off at full strength. I can just back off with a little bit of power. I just need to move a just a fraction away from that wall. And now I'm away from the wall and I can tell myself to move to another square and it should work because I'm not in, uh, I'm not hitting the wall and I should be able to move there. So zip, zip, bang, backs off, moves to the next square. And then if I wanted to move to three comma zero, that should all work okay for me. Du, du, bang, backs off, moves there, goes forwards, goes forwards. And you can see the move two is getting me back into the middle of the square. So I'm not having to worry in my back off about getting to the middle of the square. Um, the other thing that I've done is that when I've done this, I've hit the wall. And you can see during the back off, that collision flag is still set and it doesn't get cleared until the next move two. Uh, so I can actually just say that I, after my move, if is collision detected, because that flag will still be set, we've exited my move function, my forward function, sorry, uh, we exited the forward function because is collision detected was no longer false, but I haven't cleared the flag. So if I ask if a collision detect is detected after my move, uh, it should still it should say yes a collision was detected uh, if I've come out of that function uh, because a collision was detected and so if a collision is detected back off and then move to two comma zero um, otherwise we might want to say otherwise I want to keep moving uh, downwards and I want to move to uh, move to one comma two. And so we should see that this hits the wall, realizes that the collision has been detected, backs off and goes this way instead of trying to go down this way. Let's try that. Zip, zip, bang, backs off, moves this way, and it clears the flag along the way of doing the next move. OK, so that has developed a fair amount of code here, actually. Uh, but it's been written for, uh, for you in these videos uh, that is going to let Bumper move from square to square. The part of mapping the maze and working out how to navigate the maze uh, is left to you with, with, with some more uh, hints in animations in the, in the next video. Uh, but let me, dis uh, sorry, in the, in the, uh, the next stages of the, the, the tutorial. But let me kind of point something out. If I wanted just to move around the maze, then I could decide I just want to follow the left hand wall. I am just going to try turn left, go ahead. Nope, didn't work. Uh, so instead, turn right, go straight on. Or I could, you know, just let's keep going straight on until I hit a wall and let's turn right. And then let's keep going straight on until I hit a wall and then let's turn right. Uh, those sorts of things will get me moving around the maze. So they'll kind of, you know, they're a part solution. They won't quite solve some mazes. So if you can see, if we follow the left hand wall here, then we'll go around here, we'll go around here, we'll go around here. We will come back to where we started. If we follow the right hand wall, we'll find ourselves following our way around this island. And this is something that Micro Mouse mazes quite often did. Uh, the, the first robot, I think, that won the first competition just followed the left hand wall and found its way to the middle and thought, no, 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 we'd like these things to actually map the maze and, and do that. Uh, so for these sorts of mazes that have islands and that have a path around the outside, uh, a wall follower will get you around corners. It'll get you around uh, second corners. It'll start moving reliably around the maze. It'll get lots of points along the way, uh, but it won't find its way always to the middle and it won't find the shortest path to the middle to go back. So it kind of won't get all the way there. Um, so at this point, this is where uh, thank you for watching and I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, and hopefully now that you have some move functions and some turn functions, uh, you can start giving uh, Bumper the next part, which is how you want him to explore the maze and find his way to the middle.